Well, hello, my friends, the steeple people. It is great to be with you today. Um, for those of you that I have not yet had the privilege and the honor of meeting, my name is Amanda Sayens. I'm part of the team at City Life Church, and you have such an amazing community at Steeple. I wish I could be there in person with each of you, uh, but you have one exceptional human being as your lead pastor. Uh, Corey, you are incredible. I love your heart for God and for people, those often forgotten and on the margins. Um, and I love spending time with you. And in fact, Corey and I actually managed to sneak in a bit of a lunch in between lockdowns. And as we sat across the table from each other, he poured out his dreams and shared about his deep love that he has for you as his church community. And as he shared, I just felt the Holy Spirit just stirring me this message that I want to share with you today. And since that conversation, as I have prayed, as I've listened to the Holy Spirit, as I've just gone about my every day, I remember this specific moment when I was standing in my kitchen and God just simply highlighted to me that he wants his church, Steeple Church and the broader church to be a kitchen. And I want to unpack that metaphor with you today. But he, I really felt like the Holy Spirit was saying that he wants us to be a kitchen because he wants us to be a place and a people group that encourages and invites every person to bring their unique qualities, their unique giftings to making this community authentic and real. It's, it's us on mission together, being the hands and the feet of Jesus. So for some people, we might seem like a restaurant where they come and they eat and we, we serve them well. They take what they want and then they go. But as people get closer, they will see a kitchen and we'll, like I said, we'll unpack that a little bit more as we go along. But as I was standing in my kitchen and I was thinking about this kitchen metaphor, um, I was very quickly attracted to the challenges of being in a kitchen. There are so, so many challenges um, in being in kitchen community together as well. Um, but when we think about our kitchen at home, I think about the fact that there are challenges in the fact that there are different ways of stacking the dishwasher. Um, some people, my husband, like to just organically just put the cutlery wherever they want to and just hope that it all washes itself half properly. Um, whereas I'm very adamant, you know, the forks go together, the knives go together, the spoons go together. Can I get an amen? <laughs> um, but you know, so for some people, milk lying down in on the fridge shelf is okay rather than in the door. That's another challenge to face, isn't it? Um, then there's moments when you're in the kitchen and you're about to cook something uh, or you've just run out of something and there's only the tiniest little bit left in so of something and now you still have to go to the shops um, and, and replace it. Um, there's those moments where, where something gets spilt on the stove or in the oven and it doesn't get cleaned and now it's burnt, it's quite caked on there and so you have to use a bit of extra elbow grease to get it off. Um, and then there's those beautiful, well-meaning people who will empty the bin but forget to put a bin liner back in and so you've just gone and thrown something in there and it's dirty and it's gross and now you have to clean out the whole bin. Um, so I'm really sorry for those of you that are getting poked by your spouses and your housemates right now. That was not my intention but, but I wanted to just highlight to you that the reality is that there, there's things that are hot and sharp in the kitchen. It's actually a really dangerous place to be. When we all have the same goal and where we are in kitchen together making something as we do when we live out being a kitchen community i guarantee that we as we work together towards being a kitchen community much like our kitchens at home things are going to be difficult there are going to be challenges we face you know just like being in a kitchen at home and, and with other people being around other people in church community can be really challenging and there are elements of being in kitchen community that I want to look at today. Um, but I, So I want to open in, in reading John 17 verse 20 to 23. So if you want to open your Bibles and have a look there with me. Um, but just before I read this scripture, I want to just provide a bit of context as to what's happening in this passage or in the lead up to this passage of text. Here is where we see Jesus praying and he's, he's praying in the night. This is right before he's betrayed and led to that cross for us. And this is the longest actually recorded prayer of Jesus and it reveals what was really important to him. After praying for himself and his disciples, we then pick up in, in verse 20. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message 
that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. I love this passage of text. Here is where we read Jesus praying for what is on his heart. It's just an outpouring. And, and you know what's on the very heart of Jesus? It's actually, it's actually you. It's you being in community. It's us, all of us being together, us as one. Nearest to Jesus' heart was his concern for us to be unified and to serve him and each other together. Just like when we are in a kitchen, we are unified in our focus of what we are achieving. You know, you're not building this church community um, to build a church. We're building this church community, Steeple Church community, to build the church, to build the body of Christ, to make this church community a mirror reflection of heaven itself. You know, God's kingdom is much bigger than any expression of the local church or any one individual, but the kingdom of God is also an individual response. So I want to ask you today, how can we be working towards seeing Jesus' prayer for us to be unified as his church become a reality? I think one of the first things that we need to do is accept one another. You know, my beautiful husband, Will, and I have very different ways of doing things. He is the creative sort. He lives on the right side of his brain. He loves bass playing, anything creative. He lives on that side of his brain, whereas I live on my left. And so when it comes to preparing a meal, we have very different ways of assembling and presenting it. Will will use 10 different pots and pans, and I will use one. Will cuts the carrots one way and I will literally cut it another way. Will cooks with a recipe as a rough sort of guide and I will stick closely to the recipe. You know, Will presents the food in a smiley face and I'll just put it on the plate. But over the years, Will and I, we have learned to use each other's strengths and ways of doing things to achieve what we want. You know, we all need different types of people working together as we achieve God's purposes um, and desires for us. You know, after all, it's going to take all different types of people to reach all different kinds of people. But in a kitchen, it can sometimes be easier to, to just do everything ourselves. But God wants us to include others, to see the value in what they bring. And we need to look for the common ground and not focus on our differences like it talks about in Philippians 1. I've actually got a really cool scripture from C uh, scripture, a quote, really cool quote from C.S. Lewis that I want to read to you right now, and um, it's just awesome. For the church is not a human society of people united by their natural affinities, but the body of Christ, in which all members, however different, and he rejoices in their differences and by no means wishes to iron them out, must share the common life, complementing and helping one another precisely by their differences. You know, unity does not mean uniformity. I want you to hear that. Unity does not mean uniformity. It means that we celebrate each other's uniquenesses and we learn to, to first see the value in each other, not brush them off as soon as we find something that we don't see eye to eye on. If we're going to do this kitchen church community, if we're going to be unified like Jesus prayed for us to be and desires for us to be, we need to firstly accept ourselves and one another wholly. Let's remember that we're all on a journey, all growing together, and there's always room to learn more from each other. So let's just show grace, remain teachable, and just learn from each other. The reality is, is that as we go about our everyday lives, we do damage to each other, but the problems really start to come up when we don't deal with the damage and we actually allow it to get worse. Standing by and just watching is not an okay position to take. We need to fiercely protect the unity and we need to remain humble and have a sober and balanced view about ourselves because we all need each other. Romans 15 verse 5 to 7 says, May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other, 
that Christ Jesus had so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another then just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. When Paul wrote this letter in Romans, he was addressing the need for harmony between the Jews and the Gentiles because much like today, division was very common because of their differences. But God is calling us to unity of love and worship. And this can't be done without first accepting one another. You know, the, God, the Great Commission to go and make disciples and baptize them, to teach them to obey all he has commanded us to do. It's too big for any one of us to fulfill. We need each other. The other thing is that God wants us to be connected to each other, not to be isolated from each other. God calls us to build bridges and not build walls. You know, we live in a society that is marked by its ability to build walls and live, is living lives of loneliness and isolation. And not the sort of isolation because of this pandemic, but isolation from connecting with one another and it's on the rise and we need to be willing to open up our homes, open up our hearts and our lives to other people because the more embracing that we are of each other, the more flavors and the richer our community will be for it. Church is not something that we go to. It's not a building or an event, but it's something that we are part of. And God is doing a great work and he wants us to be part of it. We are all included. We are all accepted. So we need to model that same acceptance that Christ gives um, to bring relief to those around us that are, that are hurting and show them the love and the acceptance that they deserve. You know, can I just say just on a side note that if this is something that you really struggle with, perhaps you need to stop looking at perfection or looking for perfection in other people but instead keep your eyes on the picture of perfection himself let's spend more time celebrating each other and our uniquenesses rather than just seeking to find out where we're different you know a kitchen community is where each person can find a place to belong and he's invited to contribute to to bring their god-given gifts in order to be part of the church movement Galatians 5 verse 13 says, For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but do not use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. So what does it look like for all of us to serve and contribute to this kitchen community? Now, just before I go there, I just want to say that there are some people that are perhaps listening to me and, and watching me that are, are thinking, you know, you are hurting, you're, you're carrying a pain from maybe recent experiences and that's okay. There is a season for rest and a season for restoration and healing. When I first came to City Life many years ago, I needed healing. I needed to be ministered to. But there does come a point when we need to begin to rehabilitate ourselves into our church community again and um, start contributing by faithfully committing to serving one another. There are others that might say to me, you know what, Amanda, my life is way too busy to join a team, to get involved in a connect group or anything more for my local community. Can I just challenge that thought for a moment and ask if, if there's anything in your life that you're doing that perhaps is a little bit unnecessary. If you don't have any margin in your life to express your God-given gifts, perhaps some reprioritizing needs to happen. And please hear my heart. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to say that everyone should be involved in something all the time. There are definitely seasons of rest. But I sense that the Holy Spirit would like to challenge a few people around their busy lives. And, and can I just say this also goes for those that are busy doing church stuff. Just because it's good doesn't mean it's what God desires for you. So let me ask you, what do you need to do to maybe practice a bit of Marie Kondo in your life and say goodbye to a few things in order to practice the spiritual discipline of simplicity? There are others that might say that they don't know what they could do. And I would simply say, just pray and ask for direction. Ask that God will reveal your God-given gifts and talents and abilities to you if you don't know them. Um, maybe chat to Corey and Dan and the team. Explore the possibilities. Look for the needs. 
You know, when I wanted to join a team, I tried about four different teams. I joined the hospitality team, the door greeters. I served at the local high school making toasties for young people each morning. Um, and I also joined the youth leadership team and I used the process of elimination to discover how much I actually really loved youth ministry and I served there for over 10 years and now I serve as a pastor and a church planter and as much as I love all those other areas, I found my passion and love for young people only increase and my heart is still with our young people, it probably always will be. That's me though. What about you? You know, sometimes we will first discover what gifts you don't have serving god should be enjoyable that that is for sure you know our gifts our talents our abilities are, are to be used to advance god's kingdom and to make the world a better place wherever we are at at home in our neighborhoods at work or school and in the church community we are the church when we are gathered on the weekend on a sunday and we're also um, you know the church when we are scattered throughout the week Ministry is not just in the church gathering. It includes that, but it's much broader than that. God is, he has designed his church so that every person is a minister. We're all in full-time ministry, serving God and people with our gifts throughout the week. Each of us has a special function, a role to fulfill, a task to complete, a job to do. You know, Romans, um, Romans 12 verse 10 says, Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. As members of Christ's body, we are all equal in value. There are some parts that might be more prominent, but you know, that does not make them more significant or more valuable. God's gift to us is our potential and, and our gift back to him is what we do with it. Church community, it's not an obligation. It's something that we are responsible for and responsible to. And joining a team and serving, um, joining a connect group, there, there are a few ways to get involved in community life. But if, if you're going to join a team thinking that you're going to get back from people, I'll tell you now that you're going to be sorely disillusioned. That's not why we do it. It's about you and I pouring into other people. It, you know, but one of the ways that, that God actually designs us to be poured into is through community, through real genuine community. And actually, as we serve, as we pour our gifts into other people, he makes this amazing transaction where we in, in return feel blessed and a sense of, um, a sense of achievement, a sense of um, awe you know, of God. You know, just like when we cook in our kitchens, each unique ingredient adds a unique flavor to making a meal. In the same way, each of us adds flavor to community by bringing our unique giftings. It's so important to add flavor to church community and it's the Holy Spirit that is the combining agent that, that completes the recipe. He moves us from being separate ingredients to being whole, to being, to being united. Take one ingredient out and I can tell you now that it just doesn't taste the same. The flavors of the, ch of the steeple church community will be all the richer for having you part of it, not just existing in it, but involved in church life. You know, like we read earlier in John 17, it's when we as one live in unity that the world will know that they can see, not us, but Jesus Christ revealed. If we want to see more of Jesus, we need to live in unity. It's each person bringing to the table of the Steeple Church community what we have so that we can be unified body of Christ, be the most organic and raw and truest form of community as Christ intended us to be. I don't know about you, but I dream of us as Christ's body, as the church, being people that love each other unconditionally, not just through showering each other with words of encouragement, but through our actions that we care for one another and show kindness to, to each other, to be the church that reflects the very heartbeat of Jesus, a community that brings Jesus' healing touch to those in the world around us that are hurting you. They're hurting each other. They're just hurting themselves. So I call out, I, I commission you to be part of this movement. I want to invite you to commit to being part of this church community, to not only commit to 
to community, but to commit to the call that Christ has on your life and the gifts that he has given you. To believe and, and, and be this community together, to, to answer the call that the Holy Spirit has, is prompting you right now. And can I just say, even if you decide to hold back in this moment, I want you to know that you are still important. You are still val- valued, you are, you are still significant. And even if no one else sees, God sees. He is our audience. Let's pray. Lord, we together are unified, answering the call that you have placed on our lives. Holy Spirit, move, speak. As we, we're still in this moment, we focus on the very fact that you are here and speaking to us. Let us hear your voice in a near audible way. Father, encourage and inspire our hearts with what you have in store for us. We choose to let go of what we understand of the world around us. And we ask, Holy Spirit, that you give us eyes to see your hand at work within us and all around us. Help us to join you in those places and in those people's lives where you are already at work God you are amazing you are trustworthy and so we let go of our plans our agendas and we take hold of your plans and your purposes for us speak Holy Spirit speak to each person's heart as they position themselves to hear from you in Jesus name I pray amen